Hello, 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 and welcome to the newest episode of Pop Culture Therapy. I'm Karelika Kane, and I'm sadly still alone, but that is quite all right. I know Avent Nebula will be back soon, but in the meantime, as promised in the last Pop Culture Therapy, I want to talk about my most anticipated movies, or specifically horror movies, of 2023. So I'm going to kind of start this off with the movie that we are going to see today, depending on when you watch this. And when I say today, I mean January 6th. So you may have seen the pop culture therapy already on my 2022 horror movies. But as of January 6th, the first movie that is coming out is Megan. And I am personally excited to see this because it gives me feels for so many things. You have a killer doll, which reminds me of Child's Play. You have the doll who kind of takes on that more mature element of being the best friend, which you could play off with the good son. Or also, you could even look at it as kind of like Orphan, where you had um, the main character in Orphan try to act initially, especially for the first one, as being that good bit big sister and best friend to her new adopted sister. So I know I'm probably putting different genres into this movie because it's about a cybernetic doll but I am super excited to see it and after I do hopefully I'll be able to share some of my feedback on what I thought of the movie. So with that said some of the other horror movies I don't have too much information about and I'm not going to go through every horror movie coming out this year because just like last year, as I'd mentioned in the previous Pop Culture Therapy, there was more than 80 movies that came out in 2022 for horror movies. And it looks like that 2023 is kind of going to be on that same path forward. Another movie I am excited to see about, and I don't know why I'm excited to see about it because... I need to slap myself in the head every time M. Night Shyamalan releases a movie because some movies are incredible and then you have The Happening or you have Old. And the next movie that's coming out next month actually is called Knock at the Cabin. And it's an M. Night Shyamalan movie that is going to be talking about a family that's held hostage and having to make difficult decisions as they go through the process. And for me, when I think of M. Night Shyamalan, one of the movies that I really enjoyed of his was Devil. And that's where it's kind of that contained movie where they're all in an elevator. So when I think of movies like that, or I think of some of his other movies that he has done, um, Glass not being one of them, but The Sixth Sense and everything like that, I, I have hope. And I always try to have hope when it comes to M. Night Shyamalan. Maybe someday we'll get lucky, but right now, I am excited, but I'm also hesitant. However, the next movie on my list that I am so excited to see that is supposedly based on a true, and I use very heavy quotations for this because I don't think it's going to be anything like the actual true story, is Cocaine Bear. So for this particular movie, I guess what had happened in the 80s is that a bear got into some cocaine, obviously, name of the title, and went a little crazy. Now, I am not going to spend this podcast talking about anything related to drug use or anything like that. I'll do that in a different pop culture therapy. Um, but... Seeing the 
this movie have a situation where you have a bear go crazy and having seen the trailer about three times already because I'm a dork I am so excited for this movie it could be bad and it is fine if it's bad because if it's like Sharknado or Sharktopus bad I am still good with that because unlike my loving husband Kaijin Okami I actually like bad movies at times so I think Elizabeth Banks is gonna finally knock it out of the park this is gonna be a great movie and I'm happy that we're gonna get a really off-kilter horror movie good bad or otherwise I am definitely down to see it so next on my list is a franchise that admittedly I did not talk about the 2022 pop culture therapy is Scream. I have watched Scream since the first one came out in 96. I was 16 when it came out. I Well, I was just going on 16. I watched it in the theaters with all of my friends. Um, I understand it was not rated, but we found ways to get around that. Um, but I've been in the Scream fandom since it's begun. I've seen everything related to Scream, including the two television series. I know there's in the works more coming out. While the television series weren't great, I watched it because admittedly I try to support everything in the franchise I enjoy just because good bad or otherwise sometimes you have to support the bad to get more of the good and vice versa um but I enjoyed Scream 5 this is an argument that actually between me and Kaiju we have had a lot of friendly arguments about we don't get into knockout drag out fights over movies thankfully but um he wasn't a huge fan of the movie he didn't like some of the twists and turns that happened with the movie I actually did because I thought it was really well done it was really well acted yes there were a couple of deaths that happened in the movie that I thought were a little crappy but on the whole I thought the movie was fantabulous and I am excited to see what they're going to do with Scream 6 because they're going to be taking it in a new direction. Um, now I myself and so many other people that I've talked to or I've seen videos on or anything like this is starting to compare it to Jason Takes Manhattan. and. As bad as Jason Takes Manhattan is, it is also so fantabulous. It is one of those bad movies that you have to love. And if you don't love it, you have no soul for horror movies. Um, now, I won't say that for Resurrection and other movies, but Jason Takes Manhattan was such a ball of cheese, I was down for it. And if this turns out to be Scream Takes New York type of cheese, I am fine with it. I also really love how they um, handled the marketing for this. When they have the Scream number written out, the way they have the slash marks going through the um, Roman numeral for six, I thought was, was awesome. Um, so I personally am excited to see what they're going to do with Ghostface. I'm curious to see how they're going to get this together because we need more Scream and I am not against it. So the next movie that I am excited to see is actually called Family Dinner. This is something that may be good, may be bad, but it's going to be taking place around Easter. And if nothing else, at least we'll have more Easter movies. I actually want to do a pop culture therapy on all of the holiday horror movies for big horror movie, big holidays and small holidays. Um, I think we need a horror movie for Arbor Day, but that's just me. But family dinner, it's basically going to be 
the newest Easter horror movie of the year where you have a teenager going to visit family um, around Easter and it doesn't give much about the movie so I don't know a lot about it but having a young girl go to visit family to get help losing weight so we're going to see something probably about body sensitivity and possibly even some body horror with it um so that will be pretty pretty awesome then we're going to have another documentary related to horror and I know when I talked about in the last pop culture therapy, this is Guar, and as I mentioned, it's kind of cheating a little bit because it's a documentary and not exactly a horror movie. But I actually love watching documentaries on horror because it gives you insights into things that you have never thought about. And then sometimes you also get to hear what the actors, creators, anybody were thinking about when going through this movie. And this is actually going to be um, a documentary type movie, so to speak, called Living with Chucky. And it's going to be something that's going to celebrate the franchise. And we get to be introduced to so many other people, inclu including um, more stuff from the franchise creator, Don Mancini, who I've loved everything he has done. And so I appreciate it. So to keep on this horror movie route, I promise I won't take too, too much time, but definitely something else I've been seeing some trailers for that I just learned a little bit more about and once again being a huge fan of this particular person I am looking forward to seeing Renfield. So um this movie is going to have Nicholas Holt and Nicholas Cage and so I am excited because Nicolas Cage is going to be playing Dracula. Nicholas Holt, who was recently in The Menu, but was also in Fury Road and different movies like that. They are going to be doing kind of, it seems like almost a black horror comedy for the story of Dracula. And... I actually remember seeing one of Nicolas Cage's early horror movies um, called Once Bitten, which is almost kind of full circle for me with him of being one of the first movies I've seen of his and now one of the most recent movies I'll see of his. Because in Once Bitten, he was being um, followed and trying um the main villainess she was trying to turn him into a vampire and all that kind of stuff and so i'm excited because he had it looked like he had fun playing in the vampire movie back in the 80s so i want it well 80s 90s so i want to see what he'll do now so the one movie i'm not looking forward to but i know for a fact i will be watching it um, and I say that because I am a glutton for punishment when it comes to actually legitimately bad horror movies is Evil Dead Rise. Since I've seen every other Evil Dead movie, um, we actually, I say every other, but there's only really four other Evil Dead movies. Evil Dead 1, 2, Army of Darkness, The Evil Dead remake slash reboots then you have ash versus the evil dead seasons one through three so i've seen all of those and so as i'd mentioned before um with scream i try to support a franchise and watch the bad just as much as i'll watch the good the hard part i had with watching the trailer for evil dead rise is it really looked like it was taking on elements of torture porn gore and going the 11th mile with 
what it was doing for some of the body horror elements of Evil Dead that they did in the reboot remake that came out um, a few years ago that I wasn't like a huge fan of because I liked the campiness of Evil Dead 1 and 2, especially 2, but I understand things have to evolve just like Drag Me to Hell did with Sam Raimi. You have to kind of evolve your story with horror. So um, definitely I'll watch it. Maybe I'll be admittedly surprised, but I will definitely be seeing it. So another franchise movie that is coming out this year is Insidious 5. This time, Patrick Wilson, who has always been the star of the movies, just like he's the star or one of the stars in the Conjuring series, um, he will be coming back to play the dad again and also be playing, or not playing, but being acting as a director. So I'm super excited to see, probably not his acting debut because I believe he has directed previously, but what he'll do with the Insidious franchise. Um, Insidious, I got the box set, I think it was last year, if not the year before, and I'm still trying to get Kaiju to watch the series because I think he'll enjoy it. But I love, 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 love the haunted house motif of horror, which is what this plays with. I kind of hope I know it won't happen because it wouldn't make sense, but it'd be so cool if they could find a way to bring Lynn Shea back since she did such a fantastic job as the medium. Um, I know within previous movies with her not being alive in the movie after Insidious 2, it would still be interesting to see how they could play around with it. Another movie that is coming that is kind of like a sequel to a movie that came out a few years ago is The Meg 2. As I said before, I love, love cheesy creature films. And I actually love sharks. So admittedly, anytime, I still need to see Santa Jaws. But um, anytime there's a horror movie with sharks, I am 100% in the water for it. Probably won't get in the water after I watch it because I don't want to be eaten, but I still love it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with the, um, with the Meg 2. Not sure it'll be a good movie, but I will certainly take it. So the next is a movie that I will watch, but like with Evil Dead, I'm not super excited or expecting it to be a great movie is going to be The Nun 2. I love The Nun character that came up in The Conjuring movies. The Nun was not the greatest movie. I think the um, Nun character or Valak done by Bonnie Ahrens is fantastic. Bonnie Ahrens is one of my personal horror heroes because she is great at giving it her all for horror. And you have um, Vera Farmiga's sister back in this um, installment as well, Tysa Farmiga, playing the sister. Um, so it will be interesting there. There is another Jaw, uh, not Jaws, Saw movie coming out this year. I I am so far behind on those movies, so maybe I'll take it upon myself to catch up this year so I can watch Jaw, Saw, not Jaws, Saw 10. Um, I did see Spiral with Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson, which was terrible. Um, there's going to be a Ghostbusters movie. Um, the other movie that possibly is coming out this year that I'm not entirely sure if it's coming out, but I will definitely be convincing Kaiju that we're going to the movie theaters is Bo is Afraid. Now, this was titled Under Disappointment Boulevard, and it's supposed to be kind of like a, as they put it here, an intimate decade-spanning portrait of one of the most successful entrepreneurs of all time. 
Ari Aster is helming this movie, which I've loved so many of his other movies that he's done. He's going to have Joaquin Phoenix, Parker Posey, great actors. Ari Aster is so awesome. So while I don't know enough about the movie yet, I'm definitely down to see it. Same thing with Consecration. This is um, another one of those supernatural thrillers that is taking place in kind of like a religious church type setting. And I actually enjoy a lot of those religious horror movies. Um, one of my favorites, even though it's still kind of cheesy, is Stigmata. So, um, and exorcism and things like that. So I'm curious to see if it's going to go under the stigmata route of being more religious or if it's going to lean towards closer to the um, exorcism, which is religious, but definitely very balanced and different. Um, another movie that's supposed to be coming out this year is um, Cuckoo, which is supposed to be a slasher film. So not much has been given about this, so I can't give a lot of insight, but that looks good. Um, there's supposed to be a movie called Dark Harvest, which is going to be like a Halloween movie where you have some kids um, or teenagers trying to hunt down Sawtooth Jack, who is supposed to be like this... <clears throat> pumpkin head type character and then last but not least well second to last because there's two last movies that if they do come out this year I'm gonna be super down for and I'll watch because I want the first one because I watched all the other installments and that's Maxine with a triple X and Maxine is supposed to be the third installment of Ty West slasher trilogy um, the first movie that came out by Ty West, which was actually last year, was X, that also started, starred Jenna Coleman, who was in Wednesday and Scream 5, um, and basically the really cool thing about X is that it's a slasher movie with older people doing the killing, which is a little bit different, but it gives you that perspective of having to fear more than just the young buck who is strong and agile, but also those who are a little bit older. If you ever want to know how scary you should be, watch Arsenic and Old Lace. It's a black and white film. It's based on a play. Fantabulous. And then the second installment of Ty West series, which is actually a prequel, is called Pearl based on one of the characters from X. And that movie had a very different feel. So if you think of X is like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you have Pearl being, oh God, probably I would say glitz, a glitz and glam version of Get Out in a way. Um, and that's my perspective. Don't take it beyond anything like that and then this third movie Maxine is supposed to be taking place after X with the lone survivor her name is Maxine um who's played by Mia Goth she actually played Pearl and Maxine in all in the other two installments so it'll be interesting to see what she does here and then finally Finally, 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 I promise, the last horror movie I'm excited to see of 2023, if it comes out, is Salem's Lot. And this is a James Wan production of the Stephen King book. So I am excited to see this because, one, I love Salem's Lot. I actually own the book. Um, for my birthday last year, actually no, for Christmas last year, my one friend Lidort, he actually got me the Salem's Lot miniseries that came out in the late 70s. And so I got to watch that again with Kaiju. Um, I had watched it 
once when I was a kid but barely remembered it so I had such a new appreciation being as an adult because it was brand new for me almost and I know Kaiju really enjoyed it and so James Wan who is fantabulous he has created so many of the horror movies I love and own and so I'm excited to see that um I do want to give credit to one person. Um, I may not be a fan of his YouTube channel, but I respect it when another YouTuber gets to do something like the Watcher guys did. Um, but Chris Stuckman, he is actually debuting a feature film about a paranormal investigation. So... As, and that movie is called Shelby Oaks. While, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Chris Stuckman personally, um, that does not mean I don't want to lift up another person who has taken a risk and is trying something new and doing something beyond what he did for his YouTube channel. So, if nothing else, while... I don't know when it comes out. Supposedly it comes out this year as well. I will be definitely checking it out just because I love horror and I will watch anything and everything horror. But with that said, I know I talked a lot. I'm just super excited about horror movies and hopefully you are too. And in the comments, let me know what movies you're looking forward to. Doesn't necessarily have to be horror. I can certainly share a video um, or pop culture therapy next on my most anticipated movies of 2023 that are not horror but I will share that but comment let me know what your horror movie suggestions are let me know what your movie suggestions are and you have an awesome rest of your day bye